the window down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few taken from I, hides and I'll point I out. I just occasionally get a snippet first. of somebody saying something that suggests that I'm not the only one, but I don't know. <laughs> what was that? Somebody in a hide. Oh. Just tell me to mute himself, please. <laughs> Uh, okay, early morning, you get in the car, you get up to the gate, you wait for the gate to be open, okay? You want to get out very quickly, right near the front or in the front, because often these uh, lions and leopards and whatever sleep, had them, it's warmer. And you see them and the next people don't. A lot of mornings I was greeted by these. They're called Swainson Spurfowl or Franklin. There's different names. They're a member of the uh, Partridge family. They would come running out on the road and then run back. It's always nice when your first day there, you see some cheetahs. Usually you see one. When you see a group of four like this, it's almost certainly a mama giving the last lessons on catching food. I saw 22 cheetahs this trip. You'll see some better ones later on. There are 80 some species of antelope in the world, most of them in Africa. Greater kudu are among the prettiest. And of course, there's zebras, loads of them. You rarely see one, you usually see four, 10, 20, 50. At some of the bigger water holes, they've got lifeguards and the uh, now crocodiles will help you if you run into difficulty. They'll see that you don't suffer for very long. Lots, we'll see a number of uh, sunrise photographs, very few sunset. I was starting out, they opened the gate uh, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes before sunrise. So. That's why I have a lot of sunrise pictures. By the end of the day, before sunset, I was usually tired enough that I'd go in a few minutes before sunset. Uh, everybody knows what this is. And notice here and here. Do they show up? On... No, it doesn't show up. OK, well, uh, those are uh, red-billed oxpeckers. When I took this, I knew this was going to be in the show. I couldn't have done any better for a composition. I saw 22 white rhinos, which is kind of disappointing because in the 90s, two trips, I would see more than that in a single day. They're being decimated. And these were leaving. I just quick shot. Okay, we'll see better ones later on. When I tell a girl that I think she's a 10, I don't tell her that on my scale, this is a 9.5. <laughs> Where's a warthog? If you look on the back and on the front, you'll see mud on top. They like to fling mud if they've had their drink. And that helps to pull them off and also keep insects away. The mama and young, the, the um, real young ones, the, the skin, the fur is really fuzzy. It's really neat to see. This is a little too 
old to really see that well. Yeah, blue wildebeest, you often see this. They're head down and then, oh yeah, let's roll. It always tastes better if you were in the water while you're drinking. This is the yellow-billed stork. So quite a few of them. And African spoonbill. I don't know what this is. I have all sorts of literature, the common birds there, the common birds in South Africa. I saw these by the dozen. If anybody knows, please let me know what it is. It looked to me like uh, an immature heron. I tried batching it up with immature herons and either the eye color wasn't right, the, be the beak color wasn't right, the eggs, the legs, I'm sorry, weren't right. Clean up in aisle five. I, these are uh, white back vultures. I don't know what they were cleaning up because they, they were just gathered too strongly. Spotted hyena, they're the second largest land um, predator to the lion, of course. They're known as scavengers, but that's not quite correct for the spotted hyena. They kill more than half their food, scavenge the rest. The reason why I'm showing this is a sunset picture, but I wanted to show you look carefully at those lights. That's the camp where I was staying. Early morning. No, it's really thrilling to have the window down and you're and you realize they're right there. That's the edge of the road. Yes. Walking right by. And don't complain in some of these that where well, you didn't get the whole of the tail in. I was zoomed as you know, <laughs> wide as possible. But you know, uh, I couldn't drive further back. They're walking by and that's what I could get. You can see how scared they are of cars. They've really gotten used to them. And this is an oldster. Guess what they're eating? No. Zebra? Zebra. No. Tourist? No. I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised to discover how many giraffe they eat. I was told that in the park, uh, sometimes 50% of their food is giraffes. There's a lot of food in a giraffe because they are quite big. And there were several right next to the road. As you can imagine, it caused a bit of a traffic jam. Okay. You want to try to take this away from that lion? Yeah. And there's the black back. Yeah, the black back jackal waiting for his chance. And they're waiting for their chance. It took them a number of days to go through that carcass. And each day I would go out and look again, see what it could see. And so did everybody else. They have drive up beauty salons 
<laughs> Those are, of course, uh, baboons. I asked him a chemistry question, he hadn't a clue. Another hyena. You see how well he blends in? The spotted hyena. Lilac breasted roller, one of the most beautiful birds I've ever seen. They will be there right at the edge of the road on a bush and dash down, get something, fly back up to the same spot. You often see two, four, six, ten, twenty, and you often see them uh, nose to tail. Now you might wonder, aren't they supposed to be white and black? Well, and brownish. And sometimes you can't tell what the true color is because they roll in the dust. The blue wildebeest doesn't look very blue, but they have color variations depending on the area. But you can tell it's uh, got these stripes. <laughs> uh, Harrier hawk. Now this was at a, a uh, hide. I didn't have much luck with most of the hides. I had some luck on some trips, not much on this trip. There were very few animals that were out in the open and by themselves and close enough to do good photographs. Now, some of the big water holes where I was in the car, I had good luck. Don't worry about the color of this one, uh, looking somewhat uh, reddish. It's early morning. I was getting up. I was off in first, second, third in line. And it, they opened the gates a little bit before sunrise. Okay. Now this is a water buck. And I really love this. It got a very shaggy coat. Beautiful animal. And you'll be able to tell from the behind that that's what it is because they've got uh, that ring around the, the rear and we'll see that better in some other photographs. True buffalo not the American bison, but the Cape Buffalo. And those are some uh, red-billed oxpeckers. The steenbok is one of the smaller of all the antelope species. It's about uh, 18 to 24 inches at the shoulder for an adult. Very pretty animal. A ground hornbill, though there, there are a number of species that are called hornbills, most of them in one family, and this is in a different family. It's not closely related to the other hornbills we'll see later on. These are apparently quite threatened, and they're not one of the more beautiful birds, if you want my opinion. I really got to to like uh, these, some people, you know, where did you see? Oh, there's a, some hyenas down, oh, I don't care. But I, I found them interesting. Another, I'm sorry? Uh, no, <laughs> they didn't make me laugh. This is another sunrise. A hooded vulture. 
there are quite a few species of vultures in Africa. I asked them some chemistry questions and they had no clue. Baboons again. This is not the same giraffe or the, probably not the same lion. Yes, you can tell for sure what it is. This is another day and another sunrise. I took this and put it in the show to give you an idea of scale. Now this is the, the second of the giraffes, several days on, and they're still working on it. Do they go after the guts first? They go after the guts first, yes. Elephants. Now this was another um, hide and there wasn't much to see there that was close. You could you know, see animals way far away because it was a big water hole. Uh, these are hippos and we'll see a lot more of them. They are very dangerous because they're in the water and you know people are in their uh, canoes or boats and they suddenly come up or somebody will be swimming. I wouldn't swim there, but uh, uh, they, they kill a lot of people. And when they come out, they do this at night. Most of, the, most of the time they're in the water or right next to the water. When they come out, uh, you get in their way and they're not going to respect you at all. This is a... Yes. African darter. And you can see the family would be related to in terms of birds here. Jim, do they uh, dry out? They oh, they're drying out. Yes. Drying out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the Anhinga and so on. This is a red build. I'm sorry, a red crested Corhan. I don't guarantee I'm pronouncing all these correctly. So it's, and of course, traffic gets stopped when they see lions. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it's, it's theirs. You're yeah. trespassing in their country. Uh, well, but we'll we'll see some later on with uh, real scars. So, yes. Now there's a red-billed hornbill. Now this is in the hornbill family with a lot of different species. All the guidebooks tell you that. The leopards like to rest in trees. Look, I had four previous trips looking and lo and behold here, right beside the road. As you can imagine, there were a number of other vehicles there. And after sitting there for a while, it was time to get up, to come down, to walk to another tree and climb up in that, right next to the road. And after a while, no, I'm gonna get down and walk off in the distance and climb up into another tree, searching for the perfect tree. The more hippos had a big water hole. Some of the big water holes are dams, okay? That dammed water in a small stream. They spend a lot of the day in the water, or maybe they'll get out for a while and lie in the sun and then go back in the water. Their skin, believe it or not, is very sensitive to the sun. And then the elephants come along. And when the elephants come to a water hole, it's their water hole. I've often seen the uh, matriarch chasing other animals away even chasing birds away, 
I've seen them chase buffalo away. Several, you know, a group of 10 or 15 elephants and the matriarch chasing, trying to chase two or 300 buffalo away. Well, the buffalo would go, and then as soon as the matriarch goes on, they'd come back. There were, as I said, 20, 22 uh, rhinos were all I saw. And these were two of the closer ones. Can anybody do that, stand on one leg and wrap the other foot around? This is the yellow-billed stork again. And uh, another Nile crocodile. There's mama and baby. That's a black smith lapwing. Try to say that fast three times. Now, there you can tell for sure that this is a water buck. Now, you see a lot of spotted hyenas right next to the road and a lot of young ones right next to the road because they often den in the culvert underneath the road. And there, there's that same one with a larger one. How did the ibis? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Well, you know, if you want to go fishing and you don't have a boat and there isn't a rock at the right place, you just hitch a ride. That, that's a uh, gray heron. It's similar in size to the great blue, but the colors aren't quite right and the markings aren't quite right, of course, for the great blue. And here's one coming out. Lots of scars, they're, they're uh, very gregarious. They get into lots of fights and quite often you'll see them with fresh scars, still unhealed. Green-backed heron. A very young, fuzzy. a bit fuzzy, but I've seen them much younger than, oh, just so fuzzy. So is it unusual for the stripes to go sideways? No. The, the, it's whatever. And they're all different. It's like fingerprints. They're all different. We'll see lots more, and you'll see what I mean. Why aren't those ones young ones like that really game? You know that. Oh yeah. Game. Oh sure. Yes. I like the uh, tongue. Now this is cheetah a little closer. If you look, it's got the. Um, teardrop on the face and you look at the spots and they're more or less round okay that's that's the cheetah and here we have some more lions in case you wonder why are you going to see so much so many lions i saw 267 undoubtedly there were a few repeats but not many and again traffic comes to a halt and the reason why you see cars way in the distance, there were more lions down there as well. There was a pride in the area. And another round hornbill. Yes. Now this is a male water buck. And again, you look at the rear and you see part of that circle. These animals are, are not tagged, are they? Oh, no. They do a, a, an aerial 
count every few years. And uh, they had listings of, from the last count, how many thousands of this and how many tens of thousands of that and so on. This is a yellow build, horn build. The previous one we saw was a red bill. Looked very similar, but different species. And this is a Cape Glossy Starling. Leopard. I had seen a total of one leopard in my first three trips. The fourth trip I saw eight. This trip I saw 18. It's luck of the draw. Yes. Now, if you look at the spots, the spots are more or less fleur de lis, which is one way you can tell immediately that it's not a cheetah. And of course, the, it doesn't have the teardrops in the face. Uh, I'm told that the, the shape of the spots that will vary from one area of uh, Africa to another. I don't know what they were, but there were thousands and thousands and thousands of them. I was in a hide watching this for several hours. They kept flying over, no breaks. Some would stop for a few minutes in the trees and go on after a few minutes. This is probably not the secret elephant graveyard, but certainly it's large bones of something or other. Everybody was stopping to take a photo. This is where, what you'll typically see of uh, hippos during the day. They eat at night. They come out of the water, eat at night. They will sun themselves for a while. If I can come back after death and we can choose what you come back as, I think I'll come back as a hippo. Nobody tells them they're too fat. They lie in this in the water or in the sun all day, and then they go out and carouse all night. If you see an elephant with a trunk wrapped around a tusk, don't mess. He's, no, he's unhappy. He's warning you. And incidentally, when you see a single one, it's probably a male. So it's the correct pronoun. I saw another one. And when I got back to camp for lunch, one person asked me, well, what did you see today? And I said, well, I got close enough to a leopard to take a picture. And he looked at me and he looked at me. And he said, I've been coming to this park several weeks, a year, year after year. And he said, I've never gotten close enough to a leopard to take a picture. It's, it's luck of the draw. Again, you look at the you know, different patterns, quite different patterns. When the elephants decide to cross the road, you wait. And if it's a lot of elephants, uh, then you're, you look very carefully at where you're gonna go. And when a herd of buffalo crosses, it's usually hundreds of them. And you don't wanna drive through that. You don't wanna to have to change a tire after having come through that. Now, this is a surprising thing. Those are Niala, the female on the right, the male on the left. They start out all looking like the female, but the males as they mature turn dark. If you didn't know, you'd think they were two different species. Now this, this is something that's very controversial. They're all over the place. And some people claim they were built by ancient aliens. Others say that it was Bigfoot and uh, 
Bigfoot's family that built them. I claim they're termite mounds, but you never get that onto one of these shows on TV and these reality shows. You know, they can't be that. You ever see a <laughs> sign like that? Danger low voltage? What can I say? Now, this is a camp where there was a water hole right next to the camp and they had a hide. So I spent several days there and most of the time I was sitting there taking pictures. There wasn't a whole lot of real excitement. So you're gonna see a, whole, a bunch of pictures to show the variety of animals that came in, watching the community to drink. Uh, these are uh, Impala. Impala, about 150,000 was their estimate of the population of the park, the last census. So I saw a lot of them, but this particular trip, there weren't many really close. Buffalo, and those are red-billed oxpeckers on them, just a few. Uh, did take day trip out from that uh, camp and this was a trip to Cook's Corner. Doesn't look at anything special. Why do I show it? Well, it's called Cook's Corner because it's the junction of three countries. But no, uh, it's uh, South Africa, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. So if the authorities were chasing you from one country, you had two places to flee to. So it became a place for crooks to gather and crooks corner. And here we have God's gift to uh, the animal world. White fronted bee eaters. It was tough getting them. They weren't there for very long, but the only ones I saw close enough to take a picture. Baobab tree, sometimes referred to as the upside down tree because in the winter, their dry season, they leave, lose all the leaves and looks like you've got way, uh, I'm sorry, that roots up in the sky. And now we're back at the water hole and the buffalo came in to drink. And the elephants came in. Would you like to have to drink that water after the buffalo and the elephants and so on have stirred it up? And a buffalo and some ox peppers. One of, one of the stupidest birds in the world has to be the crested guinea fowl. When danger threatens, they run towards it. And all of a sudden, the last minute, they realize, wait a minute, that's not a good idea. And they turn and run away. I, there's several different species. Yes, but it's much more fun to run and maybe not quite make it. <laughs> I don't know what started this dispute, but it was right there at the water hole. There's some, some uh, mud has been flung there. And here we go again with Impala. Now, a lot of the water holes are artificial and they pump water up into a holding tank and the valves are set so that when the water level in the water hole gets too low, then water comes out of the tank and then water comes back up from the pump. But you know, the elephants don't have to worry about going to the actual water hole. And here we have some of the hippos out in the sun. They can't stay out all day in the sun, their, their skin is affected by the sun. And here we have another uh, hyena. 
You know, it's hard to see, but you see those little black dots? Yeah. They're flies. So if you wonder what it would be like to have a bird perched on your head, you understand why they allow it. Another lilac breasted roller. The Cory Bustard can be more than 40 pounds. So it's either the, some claim it's the heaviest bird that can actually fly or comes close to being the heaviest bird that can actually fly. Some hinged tortoises enjoying the sun. So was that a water hole? No. Realize that uh, this was the dry season and they there were some around, but they would have been staying close to water much of the time. I don't know what started this dispute, but I watched it for some time. Now this is a sesame. If you notice the, the markings, quite interesting. If they're correct in their population count, I saw about 20% of all the sesabees in the park in two days. That's the luck of the draw. And of course, another time I might not have seen a single one. This is another few tree just covered with birds. I don't know if they're the same species, but uh, this was at a hide. Not everybody likes to have their photo taken. This is another sunrise. There were actually four cheetahs together, but they were in among the bushes. So I just was able to catch two. That's a blue tongue. And that tongue is long. It's the only animal that can clean out its own ear with its own tongue. That's how long. I've now read this in many, many places. I think it's correct. There are several small streams in the park and uh, I, I was there, nice view. Couldn't see much in the way of animals. The Goliath heron, up to five feet high, according to one source. It also claimed that the wing spread could be nine feet. I found others saying seven, seven and a half is the most. Just don't know. A bush buck. I saw very few of them on any of my trips. But I really like the markings. They spend a lot of their time in the bush, though so they are not as easy to spot as a lot of others. Now, the honey badger. It's got the markings on the back to warn you, stay away. They have very, very thick skin. They have very loose skin, as a number of lions have found over the years when they try to catch it, they want to it can go through the skin, they can turn their head around and start biting the lion. This is documented many times. They like honey. And there's a bird called the honey guide that also likes honey. The honey guide will find a hive, go in search of a honey badger, lead the honey badger to the hive. The badger opens the hive and uh, when it's done, they get some of the honey. Some more, yeah, teamwork. Some more lions. As I said, 276. You're not going to see them all. This was a wonderful camp. This is the view from the, the uh, veranda looking down. There are animals down there. I think you have to spend quite a bit of looking to find them, but uh, I could blow sections up and see, oh yeah. But uh, this is elephants. 
on, well, it's uh, not cactus, but uh, same, same sort of idea. Why was there so much water on the dry season? I thought there was- I thought there, 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 no, no, this is water coming in uh, in the streams. This is water coming in from higher elevations. Even in the dry season? Yes, okay. And a lot of the water holes that are not fed and not artificial dry up, okay? But uh, the ones where there's a stream there and some of them, they dam the, wa the water so they get a big water hole that will last through the dry season. This is uh, nursing, yes. <laughs> you get lucky once. This is a different area of the park. It's a different tree and it's a different leopard. And of course, after a while, all these people are bothering. And so it's time to come down. That's a booted eagle, another big eagle. There are quite a few different species of eagles in Africa. Another sunrise, another bunch of zebras, and you see the different patterns. This one, I know you can't really see it very well, but there are eight ox peckers on the side you can see. This is another male water buck. What's the different species of gravelly birds on or some kind of species don't have them like that? That I, I couldn't tell you. I, I can assure you I've seen many different species that allow them another sunrise, another day. Here comes a larger family of elephants. Of course, they kick out the males when they reach uh, sexual maturity. So these are all females and young males and females. You know how many times on different trips I've looked for something like this? Giraffes against a, a rising or setting sun. And lo and behold, there they were posing for me. Even the rare two headed giraffe. <laughs> Too many legs, yeah. And not all of them appreciated being photographed. Uh, this was a small beauty shop. Oh yeah. Another water buck. And a male great kudu. Greater Kutu. If you look at the uh, horns and the skull, that's what's used as the emblem, the logo of the South African National Parks. It's another Steenbach. Again, this is a typical view that you'll see when there are just two there. Head on that, yes. Now I had a, a guide pamphlet of which roads were the best ones to go looking for wildlife. Some of them were, were helpful and some I ignored. And one that I ignored, driving down this whole bunch of lions over in the distance and I watched them get closer and closer and start to cross the road in front of me. 
the pride of 21 lions. There, I, my, I get a count of 17 or 18 in this photograph, some were lagging behind. That's the biggest pride that I have personally seen. You've seen a lot of giraffes. Why is this one so much darker? Well, the older they get, the darker they get. And most of the procreating is done by the older, darker males. Are you driving yourself? Oh yeah, the whole way. Yes. I, so you usually did like a canvas truck or Jeep or something? No, I had a uh, Nissan uh, four, four by four. Uh, this is a female kudu. They're so pretty. And another pride of lions. There's the male, some of the females, and a bit of nuzzling. Family portrait. Oh, yeah. I'm, and then they started to break up and walk away. And no, there's nothing wrong with the one lying down. That's, that's a common sight, but you look at the, the stripes and how they meet. This is a white backed vulture. Again, it's early morning. And a battler. It's a member of the Eagle family. Come on. Doesn't want to. There we go. Now, later in the season, I started in early June. This is now getting towards the end of July. And a lot of water holes I'd been to earlier where there was a lot of water, now they're getting mud. And you can see that on the impalas. Another sunrise. The uh, yellow billed stork. And I was focused on it and decided to take off. If I had known, maybe I would have gotten the whole bird in, but there was no warning. This is a uh, gray heron again. Another blacksmith lapwing. They're not yawning. It's look how big my mouth is. I'm bigger and tougher than you. In fact, look. No, you don't want to be anywhere near that. And you look at this one, look in the back, you see those are fresh scars. And incidentally, the two birds there in the bottom are African jacanas. And here we have another guinea fowl. This is a helmeted guinea fowl, also one of the stupidest birds that I've ever seen. But you'll see a whole flock of them come running out. You're driving along. They come running out in front of you. And suddenly, oh, 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 oh what am I going to do? Oh, just barely get off. Oh, another beauty. And they, they often get down there on their knees to eat. Oh, the, the vegetation, right? The grasses and so on. This is a male impala. Uh, the African fish eagle. They're apparently so adept at hunting and catching that what I've read is they only spend an average of a few minutes a day getting their food. This was at a hide. 
as was this. That's a Nile monitor lizard, also called a water monitor lizard. And what's sticking out of the mouth is exactly what you think it is. Well, I actually watched as this gray heron caught the fish while on the back of the hippo. Another sunrise. The spotted hyena is actually chewing up the bones. I mean, literally chewing and swallowing the bones. And it's not a surprise that their uh, dung turns white. I don't know what it was with being chewed up. This is another Goliath heron. And one of the few pictures I, I could get of a rhino that was close and you know, not in among half behind bushes. And another male elephant, almost certainly. If you look at the, the back, there's a lot of dust on there. Deliberate, you understand. I don't, I didn't say anything. But uh, didn't want to be photographed, I guess. And a couple of round hornbills doing the two step. And with this Cape, Cape Glossy Starling, we finished the Kruger part. And now we'll go on to Calgati, French, for, French Frontier Park. Uh, the one road is right on the border with Botswana. I have been in Botswana hundreds of times because the road keeps going back and forth from South Africa to Botswana, South Africa, Botswana. And this is a springbok. Oh yeah, I got into the bushes. This year's fashion, uh, sunrise. Now we're at the edge of the Kalahari Desert it's very dry, not as high a density of, of animal life at all. But on the other hand, there, there's less bush around, so it's easier when you see something to get a, a picture. Now, if you are a blue wildebeest and you've got it right, sitting on your head, one eagle, and working on your rear, another eagle, you're not in very good shape. What are they eating? What on earth are they finding, finding to eat there? Not much. I mean, look at this. But the springbok don't need to drink. They get moisture from what they eat, but they'll drink. And also it adapted well to the uh, desert climb. Is the gemsbok, also called oryx, but in South Africa they call them gemsbok. Gem yes, and they're really, if you're a lion approaching them from the front, you're, you could be in trouble with those horns. But you notice that uh, we have a unicorn there. Yeah. This is a pale chanting goshawk. Now there's a relationship between the pale chanting goshawk and the honey badger because the, the honey badger will sometimes scare something up that it can't catch. And you often see them a pair of them following around the honey badger. And I saw this several times, trying to get whatever escapes the honey badger. There are a number of species of weaver birds. And this was one of them. The only one I got close enough to photograph. This is a boot booted eagle. 
Now, if there's not much water and you want to get clean, you need to take a dust bath. And even the, the headless ostrich will take a dust bath. And here's a male doing its dance. And a male on the right, the dark, and female on the left. So here we have another honey badger. I had seen a total of one honey badger in four previous trips. I saw a dozen on this trip. You just don't know what's, what you're gonna see. And this one was walking right along the road. And you see, I got pretty darn close. Another sunrise. A ground squirrel, Ooh. cheetah, but that cheetah was going to another. So there were two and I was really delighted when they got up and started walking toward me. This is an eland. It's the largest of the antelope species. The only live one that I saw on this particular trip, I've seen quite a few on other trips. It's another Cory Bustard. And another of the uh, greater kudus, male of course. Red heart of beast. Not very common, but again, it has quite different uh, markings. This is uh, another Korhan, but it's a black Korhan. Another sunrise. And the Gemsbach. Again, doesn't need to drink, but will drink when possible. Blackback jackal. Now, I was there in the dry season during a drought. And you know, under circumstances like that, some of the animals get dehydrated and they have to you know, get to the water hole and maybe they can recover. Here, uh, two cheetahs invited an ostrich to lunch. The cheetahs had a good time. I'm not so sure that the ostrich did. No. The leopard tortoise. Leopard tortoise. And here's one I don't think can get to the water hole to recover. I I think it's a blue wildebeest, but I'm not sure. Not much to tell. Now here we have no, not prairie dogs. It's it's a ground squirrel with surrogates, and they often share dugouts. Okay, and again here's. Here are just the circuits. Some blue wildebeest. Not much. Oops, I, you know, when you've got your window down and you're on the far side of the road and there's a lion walking along the other, the edge of the other side of the road, it's kind of exciting. <laughs> And I would drive a little bit and he'd catch up and I'd drive a little bit and he'd catch up. And then he decided it was time to take, sit down and <laughs> on and on and on. No, 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 he was calling. 
Yeah. And here's another pale chanting goshawk and a black backed jackal. Some blue wildebeest. It's not mating season, so they're just practicing. But I saw a lot of this. So another lion, and it was there behind the bushes, and I watched, and I waited, and I watched, and I waited, and finally he stood up and then came toward me. Oh, but no, he wasn't really interested in me. This is yeah, yellow mongoose. Now, English is a very interesting language. The plural of moose is moose, the plural of goose is geese, and the plural of mongoose is mongooses. <laughs> Now, if you're going to stop in a picnic area, you should be careful where, which table you sit in. Yeah, well, no, this, this had a, this fall fell down some time ago. And here was another honey badger. And they are good diggers, as you can see. Hmm. These are social weaver bird nests. I had seen loads and loads in previous trips. I didn't see many this trip. I don't know why. This is my only picture and my only sight of a black hyena. They're far smaller than the spotted hyena, and they rely on scavenging. They can kill very small animals, but nothing, nothing big. They're much too small. Another sunrise, and here's a spotted hyena just relaxing in the morning. Some days I saw hardly anything in this park. So our next picture is another sunrise. And the next morning in the same place, there were three hyenas lying there. And one decided to get up and walk over near me with a punk hairdo. Yeah. And you know, you think you're really lucky when you've seen two leopards in trees. And here it is in a different park. So it's not the same tree. Not the same leopard, and it's my third. And time to get down, and time to walk. As you can imagine, I have a whole lot. If I showed you all the pictures I have of leopards, we'd be here for quite a while. And all the pictures of lions, we'd be here for hours. And here come the spring box. You'd often see them 50, 100, 200. And you say, where do they find enough to eat? That one's also not going to recover. Some blue wildebeest. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, man-made. They used to be all windmills. Now, most of them have been converted to, uh, you know, solar panels. Another sunrise, another day. And those, you can see the, sh the outline of some social weaver bird nests. And here we've got another red heart of beast. And another cheetah coming out to pose and walking along. 
And now we're coming to my last day. I was hoping the last day was going to be really good because I you know, then had to drive two days to get to the airport. It wasn't good. It was incredible. I got to the second water hole and there was a lion kill right next to the road. And I think it was a blue wildebeest. And this, oh yeah, and this this uh, that one. No, no, it's makeup. And she's one on the right is wearing a lot of red lipstick. Lipstick, yes, yes. Oh, he's resting after having had a big meal. Meanwhile, these two were attempting to make lion cubs. They would make an attempt and then they would rest and walk a little bit and they'd try again and try again. I stopped counting at 20. And that's normal. When she's in heat for a day or two, they just go on and on and on and on. Meanwhile, the others were ignoring and eating or resting. I don't know why it's all pink. Well, they lick one another. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. What can I say? Anybody want to try to dispute control of her? And then the jackals came in, their turn. And there's another one resting again. And oh, they're going at it again. Well, I guess you're all pretty tired by now because this is the end. <laughs> yes. Now I'll get out the rest of the 10,000. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, Jim, do you go through all your, all the pictures then, too? How long does it take you to go through? <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least at two days. <laughs> weeks. Lots of weeks. by yourself then? Yes, on this trip. Yes. And in the 2014 trip, which I put on program here in 2015. Uh, the previous trips, I was not alone. Two trips, I was with my brother and some of his family. Those are the places they don't take trips to? Well, I've been to 40 some different countries and uh, five times to Africa. No, I have not. But I, I, I landed there. Yeah, I, I lived. I lived in New Zealand for a year. Yes, New Zealand. I lived for a year. Yes, and I was about six weeks in Australia. Fiji, Tahiti, Western Samoa. several times to Scandinavia. I had three sabbatical leaves in England. That means the wild country, huh? mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody outside of our room can hear what the conversation is. Um, if, if, if anybody has any questions uh, out there, you can turn on your mics. Uh, let's stop the share, uh, Jay, if you could. First, stop the recording. Thank you.